Hey folks, welcome. Today I'm going to show you a cool trick uh, I found in Notch Builder thanks to my good friend Armin at Notch. This is actually a really interesting one because it is a huge workflow helper for so many people. So for example, if you're a creative, this is going to be helpful. If you're on the technical team, this is going to be helpful. If you're on the development team, this is going to be helpful. Helpful all across the board and little known secret. So let's talk about it first a little bit in practice and I'll tell you kind of why this can be so exciting. So what I want to do is open up one of these samples here in the templates, the cloner based video processing. And the situation that I think a lot of people are going to run into, especially if you're building notch content with the intent of exporting this to other kinds of media servers, whether it's disguise servers, touch designer, or any other platform that can host notch blocks. One of the things that you're quickly going to realize is you don't always have the server right there. You know, if you're working in touch designer, Maybe you have uh, just the simple version on your computer for working. Maybe you're not a touch designer developer at all. Maybe you're just a content creator in Notch. Probably don't have the disguise server on you at all times. And it can be really hard to see if the work that you're doing is actually going to embed itself properly inside of another media server. Especially when it comes to things like ranges for sliders that you're exposing. Um, checking to see if any of the properties make sense, if the naming is good, if everything's loading correctly with assets and all this good stuff. And in this example, we're going to take this. Let's talk about taking this into our media server. And then I'm going to show you a cool little application that simulates the actual media servers loading those notch blocks into them. So in this example, we've got a pretty simple thing going on here. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. And let's just start straight up by saying, you know what? We're done. We're ready to test this. I'm going to go to project, compile block for my media server. And I'm going to go ahead and dump this on my desktop. Now that I'm finished, you know, I could hop over to Touch Designer and load that in into a notch top, but let's say I don't have my media server here, but I still want to somehow test what I've been working on. So what I can do is minimize notch, open up my file browser here, and navigate to the installation directory where notch is. And inside of it, you're going to see this application called FX player host D3D11 underscore X64. Now this is a really cool one because it is essentially a tool that was developed to test media server blocks before they get to their media servers to make sure everything's working, all the right properties are being exposed, and it's so easy to use that I highly recommend adding this to your toolkit. So I can go ahead and double click it and open it. And first thing I'm going to do is just size it down a little bit so I can see everything on my screen. Now you'll notice we have this kind of floating properties window and there's not much going on here except letting us set a resolution and seeing a little bit of stats about our system. So I'm going to go ahead and actually first thing is set my resolution to 1280 by 720. And then I'm going to hit this load block button and find the DFX DLL that I just exported from Notch and double click it. Now as this goes through the process of loading this, it's actually going to load it as if this was loaded into a media server. So that means any of the properties that were exposed are going to be listed here in a way that we can easily work with. So for example, by default, the notch here is exposed because if you've used, you know, notch tops in notch designer, even if you don't have other layers, that option is always there. So we can see that exposed. We can also see a little bit of stats here about how much VRAM is getting used once this is uh, embedded in a media server, what the frame time is like on this machine, all kinds of good stuff. But what about those properties? Because that's really where this is going to become a helpful thing to test. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to hop back into Notch and let's expose a few properties here. So I'll go to my frame feedback. I'll hit play here just so I can experiment a little bit. So let's go ahead and expose this previous frame feedback. Let's set a value minimum to maybe zero and a maximum of maybe 0 0.9. We'll click expose property and okay. And then maybe we'll go to our shape 3D here and let's expose the radius because that changes the look quite a bit. And let's say our minimum in this case is only going to be maybe 0 0.1 and our maximum is maybe two. Expose it, hit okay. Then you can go through this, expose as many things as you want, you know, cause essentially you're gonna be working on a project and when you wanna embed it into a media server, you really wanna give the operators as much control as possible over what's happening. 
So let's assume that I've fished my glorious artistic project here and I've exposed everything I needed to expose. And I really want to test this. Like, is this working correctly? Did the exposed things do all the things I think they're going to do? I can go ahead to project, compile block for media server, go ahead and put this on my desktop, but I'll give it a different name. So this is going to be number two. And then minimize notch, go back and open the FX player host D3D. Same as before, I'll change my resolution here to be 1280 by 720, because let's assume that's what I'm working with at the end of the day. And then I can make that screen a little bit smaller, click load block, and go find my cloner based video processing number two. Now the nice thing is we can take the property window and kind of just drag it out of the way. You can even fold it. But we can see here in our instance one properties, now we have two of those sliders revealed to us. We've got our previous frame feedback, which if I start kind of playing with in real time, we can see it's doing exactly as we expect. And same with our radius, we can play with that in real time. So this can be a really effective way for you to test your media blocks. Because for example, if you're a creative and your main job inside of Notch is content creation, chances are you probably don't have touch designer licenses, you probably don't have disguise experience, you know, maybe you're coming from After Effects or Cinema 4D Maya, and you're using this as a content tool, you don't even want to get into the weeds of how to load this into media servers. But you still want to experience what your end client or your partners or your other folks are going to receive this media block, what they're going to experience. And this is great for that. Now, maybe you're a developer, maybe you do have touch designer on hand, but maybe the license is on a different computer, especially as you start to get into these bigger and bigger installations, it's very likely that you don't have all of the right bits and pieces or licenses required to run this either at home, especially uh, during COVID times, lots of folks are working at home. Or if you're even on site and you know, the main computer is being installed, you can't use it and you just need, like test, is this thing working? This is a really great way to just see how does this effect look? How does this content look that I've created? How is it going to appear in the media server? And what are those variables that are going to be exposed? Are they working correctly? Yes or no. So this can be an invaluable tool. And as you add more and more properties, they all just kind of auto populate here. And just like you prop that down here, you can hide it and move them out of the way. So I hope this trick is helpful because I've started using this tool a lot just to make sure as I'm transitioning content from Notch to Touch Designer, everything's coming along well. And I hope you enjoy using this as well. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning Touch Designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for Touch Designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.